<clears throat> okay, so hello everyone. So today I'm gonna try to cover the chapter 16, like uh, factors. So factors actually, as you know, is a categorical variable. So it's like, uh, I mean, in case of the nominal variable or maybe it's sometimes maybe ordinal, like uh, ordered variable, gonna be the, we can say about the categorical variable, right? And then in here, we actually gonna cover about the, what is called the four cats package, which is the uh, part of the also tidy diverse package group. So whenever we ready, we can try to uh, try to do uh, loading the tidy verse and then uh, actually factor is uh, kind of like a nominal categorical variable. And then uh, for example, if we have uh, this kind of a uh, set of list of the string characters as a, as a factor variable, what is the problem about this one is maybe sometimes we, we have uh, some of the type of problem and then uh, that cannot be uh the hard to recognize if you have a very large data set. And then also also it is very not too easy to sort uh based on the our our sense, basic sense, essential sense of the kind of order. So if that's the case is we we actually using the these kind of uh factors, which is the set of the level and also sorted kind of a level with the variable and then to do that to create the factor the first thing we have to do is that we have to define what is called a level like a categorical item like a desired item like a categorical we have the categorical item should be defined first and then after that, actually this factor, this one is actually kind of a very uh, function uh, from the base, uh, base R function. Actually we have, uh, this is the vector, vector. and then the level is gonna be the our, the month level, which we can import this one. And then after that, we can actually creating, converting the that X1 to the factor uh, factor variable like a categorical variable and then uh, when we try to sort this uh, factor variable we can actually say about the uh, sorted correctly based on the our our levels like this and then also we can also easy to find out the sum of the typo error because if there is a, some kind of a mistypo kind of things there is actually not available kind of a factor variable comes up. In that case, we can actually uh editing those type of error. And and also maybe it's particularly maybe forecast like a factor command, like a FCT command uh, functions. If we're using this one instead of the put generating the uh, not a bit uh, NA value, it actually generates the errors. And then we actually know about the what is the missing level is. And then maybe put this one is the a maybe typo error. In that in this case, maybe we can edit those uh, uh data uh manually and then try to updating our factor variable, you know. So that's the how it works. And then it's also the same thing, like uh in case of the uh, converting to the fact, uh, vector variable to string vector variable to the factor is also a simple thing in tidyverse. This is the tidyverse uh, verse package. So FCT, like uh, this one is a vector function. This one actually allows us to uh, converting the fact, uh, vector, vector list into the uh, categorical factor variable. And also, if we wanted to check the what is the our level is, we can also use the command called levels, like uh, this one is actually January to the December, like uh, one to the two or 12. Actually, this kind of level is uh, already assigned to this kind of uh, some specific indexes, like uh, this one is uh, index one, index two, index three, etc. 
okay? Like a key variable. So in this case, like a, like a, in the CSV file, like in, in a data frame kind of file, we can also uh, reading the data, maybe if we wanted to specify some column as a kind of a factor variable. In that case, maybe for example, this month, if we wanted to designate this one, this one gonna be the factor variable, if we know that, we can actually try to set up the column type as a column factor as it is right here. And then that's going to be, or uh, we can import the data set with uh, some specific column going to be designate, uh, defined by the fact, uh, factor variable. Okay. This is uh, just kind of a very basic kind of a, what the factor is about and you know how factor basic basically works. Okay. Is there any questions so far? Anything? <laughs> Not so far. Okay, good. So now let's talk about the, this chapter actually talks about the, some of the basic example about the data set we want to use for this chapter, which is the general social survey, which is a GSS. Have you heard of the, this data set before? Because this one is actually one of the, I, I personally think that in a social science field, this data set is the one of the most commonly used and frequently used data set, or maybe this one is the the data set we actually usually uh, check out if we have any questions or related to the social sciences or some of the especially for the urban planning field, which is my field. And then uh, this one is actually uh have a very long history of the data databases uh established and maintained by the NORC at the University of Chicago and then they are actually have a headquarter over there and then uh, they actually have a such a very large data set about the whole different kinds of the social survey list uh data uh historically and then sometimes cross-sectional kind of a, some specific survey can be available. And also, depending on the, your your research, you can also get the very detailed spatial level kind of analysis or some of the uh, some of the location file related to the each respondent. But that actually should be uh, uh, approved by the NORC depending on the, your research, but anyway. So GSS is uh, one of the large data set about the, uh, well, actually these data set include a lot, include a lot of a categorical variable in the survey. So, so this one is gonna be the very good example that we can uh, check about the, what the factor variable is about. So we're gonna use the GSS cat data set which is uh, like this, like uh, it has a uh, uh, marital case, uh, status, like a uh, married, not married, divorce, et cetera, and age and race and reported income. And what's the, your political party that you support and also religion and then uh, uh, TV hours. I don't know much about the denomination, but could you tell anyone, could you tell us about the, what the denomination is? Oh, it fits with regards to religion, like, I know, like, Christianity, they have different denominations of Christianity, like Methodist, um, Protestant, stuff like that. I'd have to look at the, the data set for sure, mm, but okay. that could be it. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, thank you for the explanation. So, in here, uh, when the factors, actually, it, when you see the all of the these things so you can see you can find that the uh, Mary status and then race income and party ID and and religion and denomination all of the, these things are the factor variable so if we have a factor variable like a categorical variable we can actually counting the counting the distributions of the those frequency depending on the each category items. For example, we can actually check about the what's the race distributions, like a black and white and others. 
So that's also a very simple thing we can do. And in here, there is actually exercise about the explore the distribution of the income, like a reported income. What makes the default bar chart hard to understand? How could you improve the plot? So this one is a quite interesting question because this one is about the bit, just kind of tell us about the basic step of the exploratory data analysis. So in in this screen, maybe I will load in the tidyverse and then let's move to the exercise here. So exercise one, when we try to looking at the like a, a reported income, these are the kind of a basic frequency tables that are uh, that shows the uh count of the each category, right? So maybe based on the as it is, like like here, uh maybe I think that uh like this. Uh if we can just uh, just uh, make a uh make a bar chart, I would say maybe ggplot, data, gssscat, asx is reported R income, then R. If that's the case, we can get the, this kind of a, actually, yeah, so uh, this kind of a, a bar chart, right? But what's the main problem of the, this bar chart is in in here, like uh, in this part, like uh, like uh, in in the refuse and don't know, I don't know and no answer and not applicable. Actually, these are the kind of uh, uh some of say the others kind of a despondent category, but it is actually scattered around into the bar chart, right? That's the one problem. And then the second problem is when you're looking at the, these category items about the ranges of the income, it actually also not the not the good to read about the it is not the not the kind of a sorted very well. And also I'm gonna try to raise the some of the question about the this bar chart by itself, because it's the uh, horizontally very long. Because it is a uh, too many category in the bar chart, so in this case, it is it would be much better if we can flip the coordinates into the this bar chart that actually com allows us to the compare to the this kind of a distribution much better. Okay, so I'm gonna try to dive onto the this kind of a fix the those problem. Okay, so first thing we have to thinking about the levels of the outcome. And then these are the kind of things. This is not. It is highly unordered, uh, not ordered, and sorted well. So, first thing we have to do is uh, we have to set up the lab, uh, lab, uh, labels based on the some of the uh, uh some of the very well organized order, like no answer, don't know, refuse, and not not applicable, gonna be grouped together, and then. We also try to order uh, sorting the those kind of uh, income ranges like this, like a, a small to large, uh, largest, small list to the largest order. And then we can actually use, I in here I use the factor variable as a basic R, but you can use the also FCT function in the tidyverse. But in here, I actually use the factor variable to the levels and then the level. And then, when you looking at the category again, it actually says about it is ordered, like a one, two to four is a kind of a others kind of a category, and then from five to sixteen, it ordered by the uh, smallest to the largest kind of a sorting, right? And then now when we draw this kind of outcome, maybe we will see a little bit better. Because in here now we actually grouping 
to the other category in here and then uh, these are the kind of a uh, range of the actual income distribution but it still has the problem because uh, when you're looking at the, this kind of la labeling under the ten thousand dollars it says about a thousand two two thousand nine hundred ninety nine but in here when he actually gets larger amount of the income it is actually using dash so that is a kind of an inconsistent labeling problem so i'm gonna try to try to recoding those factor variable in here like this so by using the recode function we can actually using recoding all of the these existing uh existing uh categorical label into the left side to changing into the label into the right side on the right side and then when we look again when we're looking at the table again we will see that it is now it is quite consistent to each other right and then when we get to the this plot now we have a consistent range outcome and then this kind of bar chart but it still has the problem because it is a too many category and then a just kind of a horizontally bar chart does not quite not readable so i'm gonna try to do is in here maybe i just try to using the by by using the chord flip function i'm gonna try to flip the those uh bar chart like this and then it actually allows us to the a little bit more readable because uh other category at the bottom and then all of the income related item category item is at the top and then also maybe it might be much better if we can sort into the this one as a frequency but in this in that case this is not the case for the sorting because this kind of a categorical item order is much more important than the sorting the frequency okay so i think that this one gonna be the what i think is the most most uh readable and understandable chart that i can fix for the basic from the initial uh, bar chart maybe maybe free, feel free to let me know if you have any other opinion or any other thought about this this is my approach so there might be a lot of uh, different answers so Maybe if you have other thoughts, you can just feel free to talk about this. Yeah. In general, I think it's fine. The only thing is, I feel like I would have combined the not applicable, refuse, don't know, and no answer into like other and maybe put it at the top. Because I feel like having that yeah. at the bottom, it takes away from the rest of it. Like I feel yeah, like right. that one's not as important. So let's see. Yeah. That is a not the that is a not the actually what the question is intent to do. So I just uh, try to leave it as it is because uh, in the in the question, it does not actually ask me to the grouping the those kind of category. But yeah, or actually, in practice, maybe if I have a chance to the grouping the those things, yeah, I'm I'm happy to this this other other category I, I, uh, is this pendant data as an others or maybe maybe some some one single group and then this one gonna be at, at the top maybe i think that this one is gonna be the most frequency one and then uh, i can set up this one at the top maybe that also help us to the reducing the number of uh, category category under the those reported income yeah that's the good point yeah even if a uh, question no, question one does not mention about the we have to reduce the those item but yeah that in practice yeah it is also it is strongly recommended to do that yeah okay so and then second question is what's the most common religious in this survey religion in this survey and then what's the most common party id this one is a just kind of a very simple, just kind of a counting, sort through, give you the number, uh, 
what the religion is the most common uh, among the respondent, which is the Protestant is the largest group. And then the party ID also the same, like independent is the most uh, uh, frequent group. And then the question number three is uh, more like a kind of like a designing all the these kind of a table outcome of the by using the pivot wider functions to the what's the which religions of the does the denomination apply to like uh, most of the thing is uh, not applicable but uh protestant in this case is uh, kind of like uh, quite diverse about in terms of the denomination right so so that's the what i can find okay so any questions so far Not at the moment. Okay. So now let's talk about the modifying the open factor order because we already slightly cover about the, this part when I looking when you're looking at the, my R code. But the thing is that this one is also kind of a way to the how we can modify the factor order. Cause uh, in here, like uh, in this category, like uh, when we group by the religion and then uh, summarize the TV hours. And then, and then, uh, counting about the TB hours, we will see when we try to use the GG plot, we have a very scatter, kind of a very messy kind of a uh, plot outcome. But this is uh, not the overall pattern, so we can actually reorder this kind of outcome by using the FCT reorder function. So. First one is the kind of a frequency, and then a uh, second one is the based on what. Okay, so religion is the category, and then uh, this religion category gonna be uh, sorted based on the uh, number uh, based on the number of TB hours, right? So that's the how it's gonna be sorted in at the bottom in here. So now we have a. Uh, we have we have a sorted outcome about the, this category based on the uh, largest TB hour from the smallest TB hour, which is the other Eastern, right? So like uh, Native American and Protestants tends to be spend a lot of uh, time to the TV, watching TB compared to the Buddhism, Hinduism, or other Eastern kind of cultures. So so this. This kind of assorted and reordering kind of a category and factors gonna be allows us to the easily understand about the overall pattern of the plot. Okay. Oh, actually, I just realized something from the mm -hmm. previous question. Um, mm -hmm. when it was like the party ID, because I just realized, like, I'm looking, mm -hmm. I'm looking at the table, and where it has like, I guess they're not strong Democrat. Yeah, not strong Democrat, strong Democrat, or mm. independent. It looks like, I don't know if necessarily, because I know they didn't mention it in the question. It looks like some of those, because like, if you're Democrat, the, the ID would still kind of be Democrat, whether or not it's strong mm. or not. So potentially mm. there could have been the option to kind of add some of those. But I guess it's kind of a mm. gray area. So like, yeah, it's kind yeah, of a gray right. area. You know? Yeah, agree. Because... Yeah. Uh, in this case, actually, this one actually kind of, uh, I would say about the complex data type because it actually contains the information about the, are you Democrat or Republican or independent? At the same time, extent of the support, right? Like a strong or not strong or those kind of near, near Democrat or near Republican, uh, Republican, et cetera. So, it is actually have a have a ordered magnitude outcome at the same time nominal categorical kind of response is already uh, are included into the one single column. So maybe it might be much better if we can grouping those things together based on the uh party or maybe based on the extent of the support. I would say, yeah, yeah, yeah. That actually help us to the reducing the these kind of a categorical items, and then uh, that 
gives us uh, more more better interpretation about the, these uh, patterns. Yeah, yeah, that's the good point. Yeah, and then the next thing is also the pretty the same thing. Like uh, we also try to using the uh, similar plot plot looking for the this income by the age. We can also sorting the same part, same thing like like we did in the previously, and then also we can say about the grouping the uh, uh factor rebel to the uh uh to the factory order things in here, like uh not applicable to the in front of the with other special rebel. So we can use the this kind of re label. Relabel it takes factor F and then any number of label to when we want to move to the front of the line. So that means uh rather than to the up to the top, maybe we can actually using the by using the relabel, relabel, we can actually do this one actually at the bottom in here. Just kind of a specifying some of the item and then reordering those kind of item at the bottom. Okay. And also another thing for the reordering is a kind of a based on the, uh, we when we try to ordering the factor, we are gonna using the other column as a criteria to the reordering the those factors. So in this case, we can try to group. Uh, we can try to counting the age and uh, uh marital status and then a group by age. But we're gonna try to making the making the uh reordering the factor based on the this proportional outcome. And then that's the things we have to see at the bottom in here. Right? Because the first thing is uh this one is actually kind of a outcome for the uh uh by the car or arbitrarily assigned to the color, but the thing is that by using the this kind of a reorder, like a proportional, we can actually reordering the this coloring assignment to the each marital status. So not not the red line for the no answers. We're gonna try to see more clearly about the married and then the widow at the top and then uh maybe no answer and then the separate is the more like a like, uh, light or light color in it okay yeah this and this is also kind of a way we can also using the reorder variable based on the some other uh other outcome as a criteria to the reordering that's the what factor reorder two function gonna do okay and then the other one is a kind of a factor in frequency and then a factor reverse is kind of a increasing or decreasing frequency ordering. So actually increasing frequency is a, this one is a kind of a uh, order rebel into the decreasing frequency. But when we try to reverse them, it's going to be the increasing frequency, which is when we try to go, go to the right at the plot, this is the largest. This is the smallest. Due to the this kind of a uh, things, actually, in in this function actually has the largest to smallest, but this reverse function actually producing the this kind of result. Okay. And then exercise is a, uh, this exercise is a kind of like a, um, a little bit, uh, for me, it is a kind of like a, not the hard to understand, but it is quite subjective kind of answers. So first one is a suspiciously high number is a TV hours. Is the mean is a good summary. I think that this, this is because of the, when we looking at the, the TV hours, in here, actually, uh, the largest TV hour category is I don't know part of the this right. This one is a mean of the 
mean of the TV hour for the, this category is the highest compared to the other category, right? So if this, if in this case, maybe I think that um, might be the mean gonna be the not the good kind of a summary. Maybe I'm gonna try to use in, in this case, I'm gonna try to use in the maybe median or maybe mode things. Cause uh, I just, maybe I think the median gonna be the more kind of a reasonable outcome to to reducing the some of the some of the outlier outlier count or outlier uh, outlier of the TV hours, and then that actually give us about the more good summary about the generalized pattern of this. And also for the each factor in the GSS identify where the order of the level is arbitrary and principal. Actually, I would say about the arbitrary because when we as we look at the, this GSS cap data set, uh, the very initial kind of uh, order is based on the ar alphabetical kind of uh, orders. So that is a uh, highly arbitrary. And then uh, we actually fix the, those things by using the reorder and recording to, to, to have a more structure and then a more ordered kind of a category. And then uh, why we moving the inapplicable in from the level movie to the bottom of the plot? That is because of the not applicable is the not our interest. Because uh, rather than the not applicable, we actually focusing on the looking at the other category, overall pattern of the other different category, like uh, some party ID or religion kind of things. Not applicable is uh, not is our interest because uh, it is uh, hard to define. And then there is a very subjective and then very, a lot of variation inside of that that category, which we cannot understand. So that's the, my, my answer to these questions. And then let's move to the modifying factor level. Cause the modifying factor level is also very simple cause uh, I already show you the example about the base R example using the record in here. In the tidyverse, it also providing the function called the FCT record, like a FCT record, this function. And then uh, this is the kind of a factor, uh, factor variable that we wanted to record. And then left side in here, in left side, this part is a kind of a existing uh, category item name, okay? And then here, the right side is the, is the changing names, okay? That's the how it works. So we can set up, we can, we can designate assign to the existing category name equals, and then you know, we're gonna try to do the new names in the right side. And then uh, that's the, how we can uh, changing the recording to the those labels, okay. And then, and then another thing is another useful way we can do is like you said we can actually grouping, uh, grouping the sum of the category by using the this report, like a uh, Republican strong Republican weak gonna be the, we can say strong Republican, not strong Republican, and then an independent near, near represent, et cetera. We can also define the, these things. And then like a no answer, don't know, and other party gonna be the, we can just the grouping into the others, right? In here. That gonna be, allows us to the reducing, uh, reducing the outcome of the, these things. Okay, like this. This is how we can group in category. Like a, like a reduce the dimensions, okay? And then also we can use about the uh, factor collapse function. This one is actually more convenient when, whenever we have a, a lot of uh, multiple Categorical item, 
reduce the, those multiple categorical items into the one or a few different kind of a categorical item like like uh, in here. In this case, this one is the new group. I would say new group, new categorical group. And then this one is a kind of, a, I would say about the list, list of the category to 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 belong into the each new new category okay in this case maybe we can actually listing up the all of these existing category item and then on the left side we can actually designate assign to the that those things into the new categorical group by using the collapse function this one is actually very convenient function when we try to categorizing our uh, our categorical variable uh, into the new one very quickly and efficiently. Okay. And then also another another function we also thinking about is the lump function, like a like a in the fact lump in the family function, like a low frequency or high frequency, etc. Uh, personally, I personally don't like this kind of function because what this one does is whenever it has the smallest group actually uh, defined as a other category up here. So that means maybe if we can try to using this kind of a lump functions, all of the other, other category gonna be belonging to the others. Maybe we can control about the number of groups like uh, by designating about the, oh, we need to category, we need to lump to the, this category. But the thing is, we wanted to keep the group at the 10 different category group. This might work, but still, it is just kind of depending on about the frequency of the frequencies of the each category. So it is not the ideal way to get on uh, to recording or reordering our Categorical variable, I would say. So, yeah, that's the my easily, opinion. Yeah, yeah you could yeah. easily like lose information or hide something depending on like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, I think that rather than the use, maybe it's sometimes useful depending on about the frequency distribution to the each category. But the thing is, usually when we try to looking at the, this kind of a categorical variable and then I try to thinking about the reducing the dimensions dimension of the that category variable, we already have, uh, we already tend to be depend, rely on about the, our existing knowledges or e existing background. Or sometimes we're gonna, we're gonna thinking about the reducing the, some of the, these kind of a categorical items based on the a lot of a uh, literature review from the previous studies as a uh, cases. And then with the, those kind of a strong rationale, maybe we we can think about the, how we can reduce the, those kind of dimensions, especially in the practice. In the statistical or data analysis practice, we have a lot of uh, chances to have to face this kind of a problem. Especially in my case, I have a chance to the looking at the, some of the Medicare and Medicaid out Medicare data set in the public health data set. Uh, it has uh, about the about the five million database, five million which is a huge data set, with the with the three hundred fifty columns, and then uh, there is a one column with the uh, fifty five different category in it, and then we have to thinking about the, how we can reduce the those kind of uh, dimensions, under the how we can reduce the fifty five category. <laughs> into under the one column into the as small or as a small small category as possible that that is not the matter of about the frequency like a grouping reducing the dimension by the frequency it totally rely on about the, our previous experience previous not prior knowledge or background or sometimes going through the, a lot of a uh, wide range of the literature review related to the that, that category. But after that, we're gonna thinking about the reducing, about what was able to the 
reduce the debt dimension down to the 25. Okay, so that's the what actually do in reality, not the kind of a, this lump or frequency based kind of a categorical categorization. Okay, but it, it's still there as a function. And then sometimes I think there might be the chance to the, we can use about the categorizing and reducing the, or recording to the vector variable. So, yeah. I think that this is it. And then maybe exercise, I'm gonna try to hand it over to you all because uh, this is not that uh, difficult because when you're looking back up to the previous sections. So it is just, number one is the kind of, a, it's a kind of a matter of how we can group into the, this kind of a democratic and Republican independent kind of a party based on the this category and then the time because there is also uh, a column called the year. So we can actually group by the year. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, Jeremy actually raised the uh, raised, uh, uh, suggestion, you know, his thoughts about the long function is used at the presentation stage of the data analysis where there is a need to the presence to the client who only wants to the, see the main point. Yeah, that might be possible. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That might be useful, but but the thing is, it is sometimes my my personal opinion is just sometimes main points, just only looking at the main focus, maybe main points like the main. There is a, some key category about oh, that that we are very highly interesting in. In in that case, maybe we can. Uh, try to using the this kind of frequency lump function to get that. Uh, key categorical items. Sometimes it is useful, but if we are looking at the overall pattern of the category under the, that specific column, and then but the thing is, if that column has a too many category that we need to reduce, in that case, most of the cases we actually tends to be rely on to the, our prior knowledge or background knowledge or maybe reduce the, those kind of a categorical. Uh, categorical items by using the some wide range of the literature, but that is also the good point though, because in the business cases, if we really want to get the highest, largest or smallest point, uh, frequency of the our uh, data set, that actually allows us to yeah this function gonna be very useful to do that. Yeah, that's a good thought. Thank you very much. And then. I think that this is the kind of a end of the chapter because the order factor is a kind of a, if we only use the order kind of functions and then we can actually using the the last one gonna be the highest or largest kind of thing and then the first one is the smallest or weakest kind of things we can actually uh, ordering this kind of uh, this kind of uh, categorical items from the smallest or weakest to the largest or strongest. Okay. I think uh, this is it. And then do you have uh, any questions?